folder. All right, so let's start with this. Um, uh, copy the workspace, millimeter, degree, gram. It wants, it wants it in metric and click on the insert new element and we're gonna rename it top assembly. Okay, so we're going to check out the units and it is as it should be. And um, let me get rid of these tools and we're gonna insert a new assembly. And this is going to be called insert new element top assembly. Okay. Right click on it and we're going to rename it top assembly. All right, great. Okay, so that's how you insert a new element. And notice all your parts are down here. They've um, done some sub assemblies. Um, and so this is, a, this is, a, this is a, an assembly of something that's already made. So uh, let's see. I mean, it's an assembly of that. And maybe something else. All right, but we're gonna put sub assemblies into a big assembly. And sometimes it's worthwhile to make sub assemblies and then do a big assembly. All right, all right. So let's see what it tells us to do here. Um, insert the boom sub assembly into the top assembly. Just created the sub assembly is already located with the same document. Fix the sub assembly so that its origin is intersected with the origin at the top. All right. And I believe this one is a sub assembly. It's the boom sub assembly. So I'm going to click on that. You got the parts and that. Now, if I move it around, I want it locked with the origin. So I'm just going to click the green check mark here and it'll lock it with the origin. I'll also right click and click fix. So this one, I'm not sure if this is one I want to fix. I can unfix it later. Fix means it's not going to move. Okay. I can't move it around. All right. Okay. And let's go to the next one here. <clears throat> Insert the brace subassembly. Sounds good. Add a cylindrical mate between the two subassemblies. Use the mate connector shown here. So we have one at the edge and this one is at the inside we're gonna have to use the view cube to rotate it and be sure to solve if like things come apart all right so we're gonna do the cylindrical mate okay so cylindrical mate slider mate there we go and this one use the power of zoom here folks so you got three options one all the way on this face in the middle and all the way in the back. We're going to use that one. Zoom out. I'm going to double click on my scroll wheel. Then I'm going to use a view cube to get around here. And this one is, if you look carefully, it's at the edge right there. All right. And then notice that it can't part. So we're going to click the solve here. And boom. Like that. Let's do isometric. Okay, let's check it out on the isometric, um, and it looks like that. Let's see if this ha should have some degrees of freedom. Oh, so it's it's going in and out. It's but it is it is stuck on that plane right there. But I can't. Uh, so let's see what else I did. Hmm. Cylindrical mate. Well, maybe it tells us to fix it later. I forgot when I did this one. Uh, to restrict move the sum assemblies, check the limit checkbox and enter the following minimum. Okay, so that's going to help us out. All right, I'm going to move this over to my other screen so I can see it. And uh, it's okay. We can we clicked out of the box, but we can always click in it by clicking edit. All right. Uh, and so we're going to click some limits here. And the Z is the blue direction. All right. Uh, and it seems like in the Z, the minimum it says is zero and zero in this direction. And we don't want it to rotate from the Z direction, zero in that. And this one is, I'm not sure what this is, but where that one's also zero. Okay. Press enter. And then let's see. Well, that works great. Now let's see if we can pull it out and we can't. 
This, though, should go up and down. Okay, that goes up and down. Very cool. All right, next up, we got <clears throat> insert the fastener subassembly. All right, so that's that little piece right there. It says it's a subassembly, so. All right, and then it says to add the fastener to the hole, use the make connectors centered on the bottom face of the washer. I guess there's a washer there. Okay, a washer is like a round ring and uh, centered on the hole of the side of the swivel. Okay, so this is going to be the washer and the swivel. All right, let's do that. We're going to put that there. Now we could rotate stuff if you want, but you don't need to rotate stuff as long as you want to use a view cube. So um, we are going to add a fastened mate. Okay, and then we are going to do the one at the end, it says. And then this is a bolt, and then this is the washer right here. Okay, so we're going to get the view cube to get us right where we want the washer to be. So we want the washer I believe we want it right now we want the washer okay <clears throat> now the washer is stuck there and it looks right Okay, we're gonna click solve to move the bolt over there. And ta-da, great. Double click on your scroll wheel. See the whole part, all right, terrific. Let's click out of that. And um, good, so we are going, add a second faster subassembly in the top, fasten mate between it and the holes, similar to step eight, use the make connectors shown here. All right, I believe it's the same make connectors as the last one, so, okay. We are basically doing the same thing here. Fasten mate at the edge. So if we did that, that would be middle, and that would be the other side. So we don't want middle, we want the edge right there of the washer. Let's click solve. I'm gonna double click the scroll wheel, and it gets me to where I wanna be. And notice that it's doing one of those numbers. Let's see if this will fix it right here. But it's still facing the other direction. All right. Okay, then I click solve again. So if I change the direction, click solve, it's gonna be sticking out. Notice that stuff can go inside the other CAD. This is not real life, right? A bolt wouldn't go inside, but if we flip it, so the other side of the washer, and then the bolt didn't flip, so we gotta click solve, and then it's good to go. All right, cool. <clears throat> Let's check out what's next here. Uh, insert the nut into the top assembly. And use a fasten mate to cap the end of the screw using the following mate connectors centered on the bottom face of the nut and the hole in the side of the brace. So it's pretty hard to see, but this is the outside and this is the flat part with the green here. So, well, We'll do that, and I believe we're doing it for both of them. So while I'm at it, I'm just gonna insert two nuts on there, okay? So they're gonna have oh, one here and one there. So I'm just gonna insert two nuts on there and do it all at once, okay? Double click on your scroll wheel. Let's go isometric. Um, I don't think it matters if you put the bolt facing this way or then, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter too much, so if you did it the other way, that's totally fine. 
and we're going to insert this is a part only it's only one part so one and oh it's right there that's really weird okay okay so uh let's go let's take a look at this sometimes i actually like to have things um uh looking in opposite directions so there's a little tip right here i'm gonna double click on this and i'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees that way and uh, it's actually even though it's going the wrong way it's actually a little bit easier for me to do it this way so that flat part right here is touching with a green okay so we're going to do a um fasten mate okay so that's the flat part and we are going to go right there okay now it's facing the wrong way okay because i had rotated it so we're just going to flip it like that and click OK. All right. Looks good. OK. Make sure you're zooming in and out quite a bit. All right. We'll do the next one here. All right. Again, maybe I'll just rotate this because I just find it. I don't want to use a view cube. It doesn't really matter. But you know, you could use a view cube to move it around. But now I keep it in the same orientation and I can just do my my mates right there. Let me double click out of that and we're going to do a fasten mate. That is touching with that right there. Again, it's turned around. Let's flip it. Booyakasha. Double click. Let's go isometric. All right, terrific. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, so, um, boom, boom, range of motion, um, is free to move. All the components are properly mated. Does the brace assembly along with the fastener sub assembly not move freely without disturbing the location is so good job. Okay. And all right. So we're going to move that and then inserting, check the mass of the top assembly by clicking the display properties and top assembly instance measure the mass should be 582.59 all right so let's see if we can move this i'm gonna get out of this fast because i'm gonna probably do something wrong okay it moves okay good this one this could also move if i didn't fix it um i could unfix all right so and it's just moving that way. It's not really moving up and down. Uh, so I'm just going to undo that because I kind of want it where it's at. And I'm just going to leave it fixed. Okay. Um, let's check out the mass properties. And instant system measure. Let's just click top assembly here. Okay. So it's measuring everything. You could click on each one. And this one has 582.59 grams. That's terrific. That is what we were going for. All right, and um, then they got a video. But come on, whose exercise, video do you like better, right? To take Mine or theirs? To put together a top level assembly Mine, right? Using different sub assemblies. Your favorite assembly. teacher? Who's this guy? I don't know. Who is this guy? To get started, I want to create. An all right, so that's all the video. Hopefully, um, that helps. And I can't stop this. How do I stop this video? Oh, here we go.